Hello everyone and good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you're watching us on the live stream today. Now you're on to the Cathy Sham Enterprise. Now this is a YouTube channel that is specialized for mostly the cottage farmers and those in the aquaculture business. Now we have a lot of persons that have ventured into the aquaculture business and it is a thriving business here in Nigeria and also cut across the different nations in Africa and beyond Africa. So you are welcome again to the live stream today. Now there's a topic we are going to be treating in this live stream today and I have a guest that is going to be joining us in the live stream. So as we go on, we are going to be having a guest join us now, if you have any question you want to ask, you can feel free to go to, uh, to our comment section and drop your questions. And that question will be attended to as we proceed in the live stream today. Now, in today's live stream, I'm outside. I'm close to my pond. If you can look over here, there's a pond, one of my ponds here, and I close a few. So if there's time as the live stream proceeds, I will just show you the fishes and how fair they are, how well they are faring and how they are doing in the different ponds we have in the farm so we are looking at my fishes are dying what should i do now these are questions most persons have always asked so most persons have always come up with these questions are oh, my fishes are dying what should i do what are the techniques or what should i employ for my fishes to stop dying so before i proceed as we still wait for the guests to join us i'll just tell you a short story about some persons in the catfish farm business. Now, okay, over the last week, I was in the farm, and there was someone that the farm attendant that managed the farm there. So the first day when I came, we were like, ah, a fish just dropped dead in our farm. I saw one fish drop dead. And I was like, the next day, another fish dropped dead. I smiled. I was like, ah, you have over 4,000 to 5,000 fishes in this farm. And if one dropped dead, it does not mean there is an issue. Now, in a family, wherever you have so many persons staying in that family, if one person just, you wake up one morning and you see, you find out that one person is dead in that family as humans, yes, maybe they'll go to burial, do an autopsy or such like that. But if you are having like 10 persons or 8 persons dying in just one day, that means there is an issue that has to be resolved. So in the catfish, in the catfish family on your farm, you can wake up one morning and you just see that one fish is dead, is floating in the water. Now, it might be, it might just be a, a natural occurrence. The result might not be from any illness, might not be from any disease outbreak. So it might just be a natural occurrence for just that one to have died. And most times, it, it was not cannibalism because the other fishes in the pond won't eat on it. Because the fishes they, they, they eat on, the, 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 maybe the other fish that they prey on. Take for example, if a fish just die from natural cause, you, you find out that the other fishes in the pond won't eat it. You just see it floating, you come to the pond, you, you just notice that the fish is floating on the water. But if that fish was killed by the other one through cannibalism, you see that they will eat it, and only what you will notice is just the head or the skull of that fish that they ate. So most times, these fishes die of just natural occurrence and it happens from time to time in the farm so you notice it that's why if we are giving an estimate for those that want to run a catfish farm now if you get a hundred fishes if you watch some of my videos where i do the calculation on the profit and profits margin and the cost cost analysis you see let's say i'm working with 1000 fishes at the end of the day, when we want to do our calculation, we do it with at least 800 to 850 fishes. Because we know that, yes, there is a room for you to lose some certain number of fishes before the harvest period. Now, if you apply a lot of good management practices that we are going to be learning in the session today, now, and all those management practices are being applied properly, now you find out that you will have a higher returns. Now, if you're doing 1,000 with all the management practice we are going to be giving out in our today's live stream, you might be getting close to 900 to 950. There are some persons that get up to 980 if they are doing 1,000 fishes survival rate. Why some? For a, new, for a new beginner, you can even be getting 700 or 500. And there are so many issues that might result to that huge loss. 
which we are going to be looking at today. So that's why the whole topic today is based on the management practices, the management practices in a farm. Now, there's something I've noticed. Now, over time, when I moved to different farms to visit different persons in their farm and to see how their farm is doing, now there's something that we, we have always noticed and we have seen. Now, we've noticed the issue of wrong staffing. Now, that's a major issue most farms have faced over the uh, wrong staffing. Now, there is a shortfall of competent farm managers within the agriculture business. There, we have a lot of... Okay, uh, Sadiq Yusuf is saying hi. Yes, yeah, Sadiq, thank you for joining the live stream. Now, we have, we have noticed a lot of issues when it comes to staffing in the farm. Now, most farmers... The issue they get, or most farm owners, the issue they get is the staff or the farm attendant that is managing the farm for them. So that's one of the major issues they face. Now, I'm going to be elaborating more on this. Like I said, we have a guest that's going to be joining us shortly also in this live stream today. Now, the issue of staffing. Now, let me bring it down. Now, most persons don't have a background knowledge about the aquaculture. Now they see it as, okay, there is no job in the country. Ah, how much will you, How much are you going to be paying me to take care of your fishes? Now it's not just to feed them. He comes, he feeds, he changes the water. He, he manages to do the sorting if he can. And he continues with that cycle. At the end of the day, you see that either you have irregular growth in your fishes, maybe some will be very big, some will be small, or you notice your fishes are not even growing. And you turn and start blaming the person that supplied the seed for you. I say, ah, you supplied a bad seedling for me, or you supplied this, or you supplied that runt for me. So most times it's from the fault of the staff you have in the farm. So most times it's from the staff you have in the farm. Renan Ako, I say, hi, bro, you're doing a good job. So thank you, Renan. So our guest is here. Let me just bring him online okay he has gone offline but he will soon be joining us shortly i just feel his network okay i really appreciate your guide direction and enlightenment amos akala so thank you very much for joining us amos uh somebody etc worldwide say hi this is etc worldwide farm coe so thank you for joining us yeah so i guess he's going to be joining us as i proceed now if you have a bad staff worker, so due to the nature, okay, we don't have what to do. Let me come and work in your farm. And you employ that person with no knowledge. And the person starts staying in the farm. Now, the second lead to, we have staffs in a farm that maybe they have worked in a farm. We have, they just have 1,000 capacity farm. And you know, in 1,000 capacity farm, doing sorting in that kind of farm is easy. In 1,000, in two seconds, you are done sorting. Now, that person now tells you, ah, sir, I've worked in a farm before. Employ me to work in your farm. And you employ the person to work in a 10,000 capacity or 20,000 capacity farm. Now, minding you that this guy just worked in a 1,000 capacity farm. So the, the, the method on how he do, does a lot is different from what he's going to face in this new place. So he said, I've worked in a farm before. And this one might just be a small farm that he worked now, he's working in a 10,000 capacity farm. How does he sort in that massive farm? He does not know how to sort. Now, I'll tell you a story again. Now, and no more times, I say, like I say, as I go to different farms, we see a lot. And sometimes it just, it's funny, a lot of things we see in most of these farms. Now, someone needed to do a sorting in a farm. And the farm was, almost, they have almost 8,000 fishes in that farm. So the time for sorting, we were like, okay, I want to sort. And I said, okay, how do you do your sorting? He said, okay, I would pack out all the fishes from the pond. I'll take it outside. I'll sort them outside and bring them back to the farm. I was like, how do you do that for 8,000 fishes? Do you have enough basin, enough bow to pack out 8,000 fishes from a farm or uh, that number outside? Now, let's say you start packing it out. Before you finish packing it out, the weather is very, already hot. Now, they will not put them in a bowl with small water. They'll be struggling. They'll be struggling. When you, after you now start sorting them with the stress and everything, when you send them back to the water, you might lose close to 2,000 fishes in that process of sorting. That's why you have somebody to tell you, 
I sorted my fishes, and after sorting them, I, lo I lost a lot of fishes. Now, it was the techniques of sorting that affected them. So, was someone running, let's say, 1,000 capacity farm, he can apply that procedure of packing them out on the farm. They've, he might have basins, you just pack them, it's 1,000, he sorts in 30 minutes, he's done sorting, and he pour them back to the different ponds, and that's okay for him, because one, he's not, his fishes are not much. But for a 10,000 capacity farm, you can't sort that way. If you sort that way, I bet you lose a lot of fishes from there. Now, for those joining us, the topic is, my fishes are dying, what should I do? Like I said earlier, we have a guest joining us, so I'm just giving like an intro of different things or different experiences we've seen before the guests join us and we discuss more on my fishes are dying. And I know a lot of persons, they have questions on, okay, my fishes are dying, what should I do? So if you have a question, you can drop it in the comment section. I've seen different comments, ETC Worldwide, Amos Akala, Regan, Sodik, and Florence Captain. So different comments have been coming up on the live on our comments bar. So if you have your comments, if you have your questions surrounding the topic, my features are dying, what should I do? You can also do where to drop it there as we wait for the, our guests to join us. So like I was saying, now, from the sorting procedures, it might be an issue. So, proper staffing. Now, how do you mitigate the issues of staffing? Now, like I said, most persons do not have the background of the fish farming. Yes, it, the fish farming business in Nigeria has stayed for a while now, but most persons doing it now. Apparently, let's say the young person coming out does not really have the foreknowledge. Now, I hardly you see someone that went to do fishery and aquaculture in the university after four years or five years, would want to come and work in a farm. They'll tell you how much are you going to be paying me to be feeding fishes. And for some of the farmers, they are just starting up, they built their pond, they've done a lot. So you can't start pumping money in terms of paying high wages for those persons. So you want to do well with laborers that will just do the feeding. And that is also an issue. Okay, we have our guests on the studio, Mr. Speed Ezekiel. Ah, oh, good afternoon. All right, good afternoon. So sorry, I got, I got, I got hooked up for another meeting, and um, um, don't mind me. Quite busy. Good afternoon, yeah, everybody. You know, good morning. The Sundays, are, the Sundays are so many engagements. You know, the first time we faced the time for twelve noon. A lot of persons, when I sent the link out, they were like, "Ah, oh, we'll still be in church by twelve. We'll see." be hooked up with one activity or the other more but the beautiful thing about it is that yes it's a live stream and you can rewatch the live stream after the whole session for those that might not be live to hear and also the comment session will also be open for them to drop their questions and it also be attended to them so it's something that they can see rewatch yeah so before you join i was just giving like an overview on so many experiences you've seen and i know you've been in the business a long for a very long time and you know, one thing about this business, the more you stay, the more experience you get, the more stuff you see. Now, I, I tell someone, observation is key in terms of this business of cartridge farming. The, the more you stay, the more you observe a lot. Now, for a newbie farmer, there are a lot he might not know. He might just come to a farm and see fishes floating in the water. He might be like, ah, what are they doing? But someone that has been a lot will just say, hmm, change this water. If you don't change this water, mm. you might lose all these fishes. Yeah, mm. sometimes... You come to the farm to feed them. You know, some people they say they they be like, I feed six o'clock, I feed eight o'clock, I feed twelve o'clock, I feed. They feed with timing. But sometimes you can come to your farm by that six and you pour the feed. You see that they are not responding. It might be yeah. that the weather is harsh that day, or something just come up and they are not responding. You won't say, Ah, no, my organ. You know, some people will be like, My organ said I should be feeding them by six o'clock. So they'll still be pouring feed. They'll be like, they are not eating. You don't need to feed them that time. They'll say, no, my Oga said I should be doing it like that. So that's really an issue I've seen a lot of farms. You see someone tell me, my Oga said we should be doing it like this. Now, the Oga might not be in the farm at that moment to observe what is really going on. So that's why you as a farm attendant, you as someone staying in the farm, you should use your own initiative to know that, okay, if something is going on like this, I should try a different technique. So, mm -hmm. just, I would I like to talk more on the topic we are looking at, the management practices. My fishes are dying. What should I do? I know you've gotten a lot of questions to, in that direction. Uh, so a lot of people have approached you and say, ah, 
my fish are dying. What should I do? I've lost a lot of fishes. So we were looking at okay, what might be the cost for losing this kind of fishes and what are the challenges and how to mitigate those challenges. So thank you for joining us once again, Mr. Speedy VKL. Thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth. Good afternoon yeah, good to afternoon. you, wherever you are. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. Um, I want to, Mr. Kenneth, just give me one minute. I want to quickly, you know, it's um, the person who is healthy that will take care of his fish or her fish, right? <laughs> the person who is not sick. Yeah, yeah, and, um, <laughs> um, this, this man in his book, um, Highly Effective, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he, effective he made people, mention of yes. the production and the production capacity. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't, you must, the two persons, there must be a balance in the, you taking care of the fishes and also the fishes. You must eat and the fishes should also eat. So any yeah. day that so, you do strength, you can't feed again. So I want to use this opportunity. If, if you see what I'm wearing, it's healing strings, you know. Yeah. It's funny enough, when our fish is sick, we're the one that can heal them and take care of them. But when yeah. the farmer is sick, it's God that can heal. So I want to use opportunity to invite everyone who is watching. Maybe you're sick or something. It's healing streams, and um, you'll be you'll be well. I promise you that. All right, that's just what I wanted to do, Mr. Kenneth. It's it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A nice yeah. I've, I've been seeing the update. I watch the Love War TV station. Yeah, and it's yeah. On the 14th of March to 18th. 18th, 18th to 20th of March. Yes, 18th to 20th yes, of March. Yes, yes. I saw the. And, Yes, over, over 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 four four billion people have registered, and um, we we have a lot of people getting healed, and I'm assuring every farmer watching me right now that if you if you have anybody who is a farmer and has been sick for some time, tell them to connect to healing streams, and they'll be well. They will have enough yeah. health to take care of their fishes. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth. We yeah. it's a beautiful question. And I, I won't be spending a lot of time because I have um, about five other engagements today that I must meet up with. The yeah. question is, my fishes are dying, what should I do? And um, I, 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 I don't know if Mr. Kenneth has um, questions he has prepared because this topic is very sensitive. In fact, yeah. after fish feed production, you talk about water. And after water, you talk about health. The health of fish is very important. You shouldn't joke about it. You shouldn't joke with it. And for the record, if you were with us in our last stream, you, you'd realize that we started talking about biosecurity concerns. And yeah. if the biosecurity areas are being um, paid attention to, you discover that um, you'd be having less issues, very minimal issues about fish disease, fish health, and other things. And just to do a little recap, for the biosecurity concern, we'll talk about the air, A-I-R, air, the atmospheric condition and the air around that place where you are. And I did mention that when you look, when you're setting up your farm or locating your farm, you shouldn't locate your farm where there are in those industries. You shouldn't locate your fish farm or hatchery or anything that has to do with agriculture where you have industrial settlement. You shouldn't you should also look at your water source. It's very important. The water source is vital. You shouldn't um, because you don't have borehole well, you don't want to go um, start getting water from the stream. <clears throat> you don't know what has been dumped in the stream. Yeah. You don't know the effluents, the affluents and the chemicals that has been dumped Fast. into the stream. Then you, you talk about the feed. You know, the, the, the type of feed you use, the ingredients you use in feeding. You talk about the design of your farm and then human factor. The design of your farm and human factor are very important. The design of your farm, like I did say, um, your farm should have a topographic cold slope it should have yeah. a topography so that it will slope and um, there will be easy access to waste 
um, anything that needs to be wasted. You know, there should be an easy access for waste to leave your farm. But if the waste is not leaving your farm, what you eventually have is the waste is being accumulated and not even recycled now, but still reshared into the farm. Yeah. This can cause a lot of hazard. Then the human factor. They said cleanliness is next to godliness. A neat yeah. farmer produces a neat fish. Yes. A clean farmer produces a clean fish. All right. So now let me let me head to my topic. I, I would love to hear lots of questions because this particular um, um, segment of our lecture today, um, I know it will attract a lot of questions from different people because yeah. a lot of people, their fish die. They don't know why their fish no, die. So some people, they just came, they fed their fish last night. They woke up this morning and they saw all the fish is floating. You, they, you say, ah, somebody poisoned my water. Yeah, you hear some say, nah, yes, some say it's witches and wizards for those that are in Nigeria. <laughs> They believe in nothing, which is a reason. <laughs> you know, so some people they say is my, my village has followed me to my city to kill wow. my fish. So some they will say it's my neighbor's children or my neighbor. They are the ones affecting us. They've killed our fishes. No, there are management practices that you need to adhere to strictly for you to have a very bumper harvest and for you not to have a sickly or diseased fish. I will say it again. There are management practices that you need to adhere to completely so that you not have a sickly or diseased fish. Number one, when you see your fish um, sick, yes, fish can be sick. When you see your yeah. fish sick and you see something happening to your fish, what do you think is that thing? Your fish is healthy, eating now. This is um, about 1.31 p.m. Nigerian time. You came to your pond, you gave your fish feed, they eat, they are eating, they are swimming, and then you get there after six to feed again. And suddenly you start seeing the sluggish movement see them lying one side on your stomach, you see different things happening, you tend to ask, what is it? What is happening? It is called disease or infection. John. And a disease is a harmful deviation from normal structural or functional state of an organism. This is the normal functional state of the organism you saw at 1 p.m. At 6 p.m., you came and the organism is not functioning the way it should function. Yeah. That is a disease. Mm -hmm. That's a disease. It's a deviation from the normal functional state of an organism. Something has happened. And let me tell us, of course, aquaculture or fish farming has a very minimal risk than every other livestock. Yes. But you must be ready at all times to do what needs to be done. It's, it's, it's um, very funny and um, disheartening that you see people treat their fish like animals. I, I've told people often times, each time I have the opportunity to train people, I tell them, treat your fish like you would treat a human being. I yeah. tell them, I say, see, you want your fish to give you results, take care of your fish as though you're taking care of a newborn baby. How can you have your fish in an earthen pond. You want to stock your fish in an earthen pond. The earthen pond has been lying fallow for two years. Yes, you got people to disint it, but it didn't occur to you that you're supposed to use lime. 
also that has to treat the water. Agricultural line. It doesn't occur to you that you're supposed to use poison and other things to ensure that there are no infections in that water. People just go ahead and do what you want. You get a container, you're, you are using a particular container to raise fish, maybe a tapolin pond, a plastic pond, a hopper, um, um, uh, a trough, concrete, and you stock your fish there, for example, um, October last year. This is February. You have not brought out the fish from that water to wash the pond. And if you now come tomorrow to see that your fish is floating, you think somebody has done something evil. Let me give you a very good testimony that is not good in the ears, but good to, as an experience. One of the farms I manage in Port Harcourt, specifically Transamadi, Mingi Estates, Transamadi, if you take my face to Transamadi, Mingi Estate, or mention my name, they know me there very well. What I'm saying is about 12 years ago, my boss then is a, is a big farm. I did, I did run his hatchery very well after several trials of not being able to produce by other people. When I stepped in, production happened by God's grace. And I also did set up um, his processing king, um, king, that's processing king, K-I-L-N, the smoking king for drying fish. Yes. One of those days, we, we had the um, four ethane ponds that we stopped over 4,000 fish. And the farm attendant, Jerry, I had other th things, other assignments to do for my boss. So, Jerry, wash this pond, take this fish, the social pond. Of course, we had other people that were supposed to wash it, but the instruction was given to Jerry to do that, to carry that out. Jerry didn't do it. He just reduced the water and topped the water. He didn't do what he needed to do. But guess what? After two days, all the fishes floated on water. Hmm. All the fishes. What happened? The algae was too much and has much. become contaminated. You Very hear people sure. say, ah, we need algae in the water. Yeah, you hear people train and say, ah, algae is needed. Yes. But remember, there are healthy algae and there are poisonous algae. When, algae they stay, yeah. they, when they stay longer than necessary, they become poisonous and can affect the fish and can even kill the fish. So you need to understand that taking care of the environment of the fish is as vital as the money you use in buying your feet to feed your fish. Like mm -hmm. I said, a disease is a deviation in the normal structural functioning of yeah. the fish. You know, I really wish this would be a question and answer um, um, segment so that people would I have... have um, I dropped a comment for those that have questions. You know, in this, this will be more of like a practical stuff. There are persons that own a farm that have experienced maybe an issue relating to them losing fishes, so you can drop your questions or a comment or observation so that we can treat that. So if you have the, they will drop it on the comment section, maybe then we would have to treat that. Because so many persons have asked that question, ah, my fishes died, I'm losing fishes. So if you have those questions, you can do that as we proceed. All right. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Now, the first thing, if your fishes are dying, the first thing you should consider is where is my farm located? Is my farm rightly located in where it is supposed to be located? Because um, when fish start dying, there are a lot of things you should check mate. There are a lot of questions you should ask. Don't just assume this is this. I'll give you another example. Someone called me, I think I did say it in one of our videos, someone called me to say his species are dying. By God's grace, I'm managing diseases. 
treating fish and um, prescribing the right drug to you. Mm-hmm. And you get results. Of course, not to abuse it, but just to take care of the disease at hand at that time. So this guy called me that if he's dying, I should come with some drugs, we should treat. I do hear a lot of people, you, they will just come to the group, the different WhatsApp group I belong, they'll say, my fishes are dying, what should I do? I hear professionals, they don't ask, what is the cause? Are no. there any physical signs and symptoms that you can see? Are there any, these are questions, as my fishes are dying, what are the signs and symptoms? Symptoms. Are their, bab- are their barbells chopped off? Are they bringing their mouth to gasp for hair? Are they having rattling movements or rattle movements? Are they wagging their tails sluggishly? Are their swimming for, uh, uh, pace reduced? Uh, what else again? Do they respond sluggishly to feed? Or they respond actively to feed? Or do, do, do they eat at all? Or they don't eat at all? What's the quality of the water? These are the things you should look at. But funny enough, once you tell, once someone hears that uh, my fish is that, this, my fish is that, that, the next thing you hear is, go and buy her bag of salt. Sprinkle salt. <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, you know, I, hear, I hear some kind of thing. I just, in my mind, I see her bad list. These people are <laughs> uh, You just want to tell them, buy, buy her bag of salt. Sprinkle salt in your water. Oh, oh. They'll be okay. Listen, listen. If if you have ten people mm, in mm. a room and one person is infested with a communicable disease mm. and all of them are still in that room, spray anything you want to spray. You will just succeed in transpiring and transmitting that disease to everybody. Mm-hmm. Why would you say go and pour salt in the water? Meanwhile, the problem is inside the water. Yeah. Guess what we did? Immediately, the guy said, "These are dying. These are dying." I got there and I said, "This your water looks static. Do you run fluid?" He said, "Yes, that he runs water. Of course, it's true. The water is not too dirty. He runs the water, but there are already some fishes floating on the water that are dead." And I said, "Where is your outlet?" When we got to the point of his outlet, we discovered that his outlet is blocked. Water is not going out. Now, the fishes are excreting, they are crying out their catabolic and metabolic activity inside the water. What, what will happen? They are taking in the diseases and the excreted they're taking, they're removing back into their system. And that enough can cause a disease. A disease, disease, like people pronounce it, is actually disease. Like you hear disadvantage. Disease. They're supposed to be at ease, but there's now a discomfort. There's now a disconnect in their being at ease. It is a disease. Now, you, you need to, first of all, ask. What is the problem? It's like your statistics and mathematics. You carry out your hypothesis. Yeah. What is happening? Why are they dying? When last did you feed them? Let me see your water. You Let, me see the culture, Let me see the culture. Let me see the media. Let me see. You just ask different things, you know. Um, when you when you are done with that, you ask. What are your feeding patterns? How do you feed? When do you feed? What type of feed are you using? In fact, before you even get to feed, ask about water. You have asked about the environment. My fishes are dying. I will just come to this video now, this live stream and say, uh, Mr. Kenneth was a beautiful topic today. My fishes are dying. What do I do? I now start. If your fishes are dying, get paracetamol and glucose. Get malt and coke mixed together. Uh, with no, I with milk. That. that will make me unprofessional. <laughs> with milk. 
Oh yeah. God, this one you're mentioning me. Then I, I have to now enter into the point, right? Now you don't you don't <laughs> just have to do that. You need to know what the problem is. Let me see. Yeah. Get to know what the problem is. Ask questions. Ask questions. Don't just assume and conclude that you know what happened. That, that your fish are sick and dying. Doesn't mean that what happened in Mr. Gilly, Billy Somi's farm um, or Mr. Afam's farm or um, Mr. Tom Brown's farm is what is happening in this particular farm. No, there are different locations. For example, we had a heavy rainfall here yesterday in Ibadan. Meanwhile, yeah. some parts of Nigeria have not even had any single drop of rainfall. So the environment yeah. differs. So you need to know what the environmental condition is. You need to know um, the water quality parameters. Then you need to know the physical display, the signs and symptoms that is occurring with the fish. You need to know. Don't just rush into treating. You want to go and get fish pure. You want to go and get fish this. You want to go and get different. I sell all those drugs. But I'll ask you, what is wrong with your fish? <laughs> because just like a pharmacist, you don't just go to a pharmacist and you want to buy a drug. A good pharmacist will ask you, why are you what buying this drug? And then they do a test. What is wrong with you? Yes. What are you? Who is using it? I don't want using it. No, it's my mom. What is wrong with your mom? What are the signs and symptoms? Okay, okay, okay. If that's what you explained, if that's what is really happening, then take this and give us should be fine. Some other professionals say, go and call. You know, people should not just be out to, I want to sell drugs and I'm going to sell drugs. No, you ask. It's the same thing with us in aquaculture. You should ask, what is wrong? Yeah. Why are they dying? When did they start dying? How did they die? Or how did they die? Do they die hanging on the water? Do they die floating? Do they die with some part of their body mutilated and eaten by other fishes? What happened? These are beautiful questions that you can ask, and it will go a long way, you know. Now, after that being said, oh, you look at the piece. okay. Uh, from Amos Akal Okala. So you, you okay. say, okay, what form of treatment do one give to fish that becomes sludges due to contaminated water after the water is being changed? The, the problem is, um, what were you waiting for when you know that the water is already contaminated? It is advised. If you don't have water source, if you don't have good water, don't go into fish farming. If you don't have good water, don't bother to go into fish farming. There are four types of infection that can yeah. happen to fish. There is a parasitic, there is bacterial, there is viral, and there is fungal. This your water that resulted into sluggish movement of the fish can either be bacterial or viral. They are usually inside and not outside. And it's terrible. So you need to get give the fish some drugs that will flush the system and rebalance the system. Yeah. Don't forget that if you use the right ingredients while producing your feed, you may not need to treat your fish because their immune system will be very high. Yeah. These are some things that a lot of people don't understand about fish feed formulation. If you see, I, I, so all of you listening to me, I want to throw this picture. Listen to this picture. You went to farm A. The fish in that particular pond or the fishes are dying and floating in that particular pond and the water is a bit neat you go to farm b the water is very dirty but yet 
no fish is dying and they are active and doing well, you will be worried. It has to do with the quality of the feed you are using. It is the same thing with humans. I always and I always and often tell people, if you eat balanced diet, you wouldn't need to treat yourself. Even when you now find yourself in a despicable condition or in, in an environment that is infested because your immune system is well recharged with balanced diet and with good food, it will fight back every form of disease and infection I want to show. That is what balanced diet does. This is what balanced diet does. So, Mr. Amos, there are there are there are good um, drugs you can use to treat your fish because of um, um, the fish still in the contaminated water. However, you must adhere not to allow your fish stay in the contaminated water again. After the class, you can chat me. I'll tell you what to do. All right. Um, let me quickly okay, run down. Okay, I'm listening okay, to you. Go ahead. Um, I must have another question. Say, how often should one change water in an okay in the pond when fish are being served with sinking locally made feeds? <laughs> this is the challenge of the sinking pellets. The sinking pellets can easily melt. And then, um, excuse me, decomposing water, and that can result to increase in ammonia. Yeah. On eating feed, will result to increase in ammonia in the water. What you're supposed to do, I've often said it, when you're feeding your fish, don't rush. If you have an appointment, let the appointment read. Your fish is very important. I don't know the pond. A concrete is also a pond. And yeah, everything is mean. also a pond. Tarpaulin is also a pond. So I don't know, but let me guess you're talking about concrete. I mean, earthen pond. If you're using an earth, okay, I will talk about it. If you're using an earthen pond, for example, you don't change water. You only run flow through and increase water levels. You don't change water to turn. For, for tarpaulin pond, you can change water. But of course, not after the finish eating. It should be done hours after the finish eating. You can change the water. Yeah, when they are and then, yeah, then for concrete, excuse me, for concrete tank, you can also change the water. You can also change the water. So it is dependent on what you want and um, what you want to do. However, when you're feeding them with, this, with sinking pellets, you must be careful in feeding them. Don't rush. Take your time while you're feeding them. When you discover that a particular pond is infested or infected, don't add any fish to it. Then this problem, this particular problem I want to mention is, is very common with a lot of farms. You see a lot of people, they connect pipe to their earthen pond. You see someone with maybe 17 or 20 or 50 earthen ponds, and all of them are connected. It's not a bad thing for it to be connected. However, you should regulate it. You should control it. Yeah. You should have a lock, a back-end lock, so that when you discover that a particular pond is infected, you seclude that, you, you seclude that pond. You keep it separate. You keep it separate and treat before you continue to allow it to be connected to other pond. If not, you'll be easily spreading uh, disease. Um, disease to other pond. Yeah, Mr. Amos, you said it's a concrete pond. Yeah, a concrete pond, you should at least change water after two or three days. After two to three days. Either after 
two days after feeding, you change water completely. And when you're feeding with local pellets, make sure they are very hungry, uh, hungry, and then you can locate the feed into their mouth directly. Yeah. Okay, there's a what question. Is yeah, there's a question. I say hello, please. I'm a newbie. Can I have? So can I leave my pond without roof or covering or shelter from the sun? I don't know what is it a concrete pond, tarpaulin, or SM pond? What type of pond is it talking about? I, doubt, I feel it might be a tampoline on an etsy. That is not an etsy. It might be concrete or a tampoline. Of course, if it's a concrete, if it's a concrete pond, you don't need to um, uh, um, cover it, especially if it's gross. But if it's fingerlings and other siblings, you need to cover it because of heat and yeah. the, um, change in temperature. If it's um, a tarpaulin pond, you need to okay, cover tam it. Okay, tarpaulin. Yeah, you need to get something to cover it because tarpaulin generates heat. Yeah, because of the direct sunlight. Yeah, because of the direct sunlight. So you need to get something to cover the tarpaulin. So, but what I said, don't add fish. When it's called as a pond, yeah, I will, I will, I will respond to him. Let me just quickly... Continue. Yeah, that's, uh, it's not a question. You were just saying he he, th he was thanking you for the, for the response. Thank you so okay. much. For I can don't go add. On. Don't yeah, just go. You can put the question of our seat. Don't add yeah. any fish when you discover that the particular pond is infested. Don't add any fish to that pond and don't connect that pond to another pond. That can result to a disaster. That can result to a disaster. Then feedless. Where you, in fact, what, what I tell people, once a pond is infested, stop feeding. Your fishes won't die. Stop feeding. It, it, this is very common with a lot of people, of course, here in Nigeria, because of temperature. When someone is having a running stomach or stomach ache that is making them stew, when they eat more, what will happen? There's two more. When they eat more, it happens that they are just evacuating everything on, until they get something to treat their body and their system. So don't don't feed them while they are infected, and then don't rush to feed so they don't have um, um, ammonia buildup in, in your water. Then. When you despite your fish are dying, get test kits. Get some test kits. Test for the pH, test for ammonia, test for the dissolved oxygen. Carry these tests on, on, on your farm. And if possible, get someone or a, a, a sorry, you can go and carry it out the test. It tests for, for the dissolved oxygen, ammonia, pH. You're testing for nitrites, you're testing for hardness, you're testing for chlorine. You get to know yeah. the things that are lacking and the things that are in excess. In the water. Then num number four, you you apart from changing your water, learn to run flow through with your water. When I yeah. finish feeding my fish, after one or two hours, I run flow through. It will make the fish healthy. They will yeah. have access to clean water, you know. Then another thing you should do is, like I said, don't rush to go and use drugs. Get yeah. to know what is happening. Ask questions. Get to know what is happening before you venture into using drugs. Then get to observe when there is a sudden change in temperature. At the beginning of the year, we had a very cold weather. Yeah, I've got to have my time. We had a very cold weather and suddenly the thing changed. Changed into heat. And then um, another time it changed into um, um, mild weather of at least the rain once before. You know, these these things should be should be constantly looked into. 
check your weather. Check your weather parameters if you're okay. You know, then another one that like Mr. Amos asked, don't overfeed your fish. Yeah. You may think your fish needs to grow fast. You are giving them feed. Once they get to the point of libido, they will eat again. Once they get to the point where they have taken as much as they they won't eat again. And you will be pouring. You don't know, you're wasting your feet. You think the feet are eating. They're no more eating. The other thing you should look at is don't feed your fish with infested feet. Yeah. Don't feed your fish with infested feet. A lot of people feed their fish with infested feet. Um, for example, you see uh, people who use um, venison, for example, because it is the chief source of protein, they now use excess of it. And that can change the quality of that food at that time. You want to make sure your food is very rich. You now use excess venison. It will result into the production of nutrients that will fight the digestion of the fish, such that when your fish wants to digest, they digest what is not good and they excrete in the normal food, the normal food that's supposed to be taken in that project. All right. So you 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 look out for feed, fish feed that are not infested, and then another thing you should look out for is a dirty environment. Don't have a run your farm in the dirty environment. Don't run your farm in the dirty environment. Run your farm in the place that is very neat and very okay. All right. Now, in 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 mode, I I spoke about this when we're having lectures on fish feed. Molds in fish feed. When molds and another good um um um. um entrance point of mold in fish feed is when people that are feeding the fish eventually get their hands soaked with water and they use it to soak the feed. You know, you 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 get to have some fish feed that is moist and later mm -hmm. you see bringing some whitish thing. White, so, yes. uh, yeah. That's mold. And it's not healthy for fish. That can result to fish death immediately. Molds are toxic chemicals produced by certain species of mold. And they belong to Aspergillus, Penicillium, and Furasarium family. That's where these three belongs. Don't use the wrong feed ingredients. Another thing I, I discover is a lot of people try to use um, hard fuel waste. Hatchy waste, they take hatchy waste, they boil it, and <laughs> they, they say they want to get hatchy waste. It's, it can kill your food. It can kill your food. So, um, the hatchy waste, another thing is, they don't even process it very well. Yeah. And even if you process it, it's not, because the protein is high, yes, but it's not like it's, it's very healthy for fish. Presence of mold in fish affects nutrient availability by decreasing pancreatic and hepa hepatic enzyme activity, decreasing nutrient absorption and increasing nutrient excretion. It will decrease nutrient absorption and increase the excretion of nutrients. And this is not good. And when nutrients that are supposed to be needed and absorbed by fish are being excreted, what do you intend to, to know or see? Them? The fish will start dying. Then we have um, lastly, I did mention that there are four um, uh, diseases associated with fish. You have the parasitic, you have the bacteria, you have the viral, and you have the fungi. 
Parasitic are mostly found in water. Yeah. Bacteria and fungi are usually inside the body. Of course, inside. While the fungi is associated with the environment. So for your fish is not to die, you need to have a neat environment. You need to have, um, apart from having a neat environment, your, you or your boys or ladies that are feeding the fish, they must be neat. They must be neat. So take care of that fish, to so manage them and to ensure they are healthy. Thank you so much, Mr. Tom. Oh, th th thank you very much, sir, for joining us. And it has been a very educative session. Uh, you know, a lot of persons have learned a lot from this class. Like Amos sent a message. He said, your response are very educative and professional. I've learned a lot. Don't rush to take your take your time when feeding them. You know, like this platform has been created to enlighten most farmers on what they do. Now, if you go over the internet or on Facebook, on so many groups, you see people dropping a lot of questions of how they lost fishes. Now, I've oh. seen someone that sent a comment of they started with 12,000 fishes in an egg pond, and oh. the day they want to stop, they, don't, they didn't have up to 2,000 fishes left in that <laughs> egg pond. Terrible. They, they, so, it, Terrible. so a lot of persons have invested a lot. And now, with the high cost of feed, imagine someone doing 10,000 fishes and you are losing that amount of fishes, the money that you have lost in feeding them, mm. and so it's it's high. So that's why this platform is created to educate most of the farmers. And before you came on the live stream, I was talking about staffing as an issue in terms of the aquaculture business. Maybe one of these days we'll have a live stream where we discuss more about staffing. Because have, over the time we've visited a lot of farmers, you see that most of the issues most farms face are the staff or the persons they employed and that maybe farm to manage the farm because you see someone will tell yeah. you i've worked in a farm before maybe he worked in a farm that they do 1000 fishes and now he's going to work in a farm of 20,000 fishes he does not have the capacity to manage that oh. kind of farm oh, yeah. and at the end of the day he messed the whole thing up so in our next yeah. live stream we'll look at how to deal on staffing as an yeah. issue most farms have really faced on how to mitigate most of these issues so there's a question here. Okay, Adesina. Let me see if I can get his question. I saw it earlier. Okay. Adesina, I said, good day and thanks for this profitable enlightenment. Please, what's the remedy for cannibalism in fish? Cannibalism in fish, uh, that can, uh, funny enough, you know, that can also lead to the death of fish. Cannibalism yeah. in fish, number one. Mm. When you're stocking your fish, you need to stock fish of same size. Yeah. Number two, learn to carry out sorting on your fish. Learn yeah. to carry out sorting on your fish. Then number three, um, feed them as at when you're supposed to feed. Yeah. Don't starve your fish. When you starve your fish, they just look for one and they eat. Don't starve your fish. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. La Sisi Adesina, you've got a question. Stock fishes of the same size. You know, some when they, they don't sort, they just say, let them be there. And the fishes will grow there. You see that at the end of the day, when you want to you remove water from your pond, you see some, one, a fish might be one kg, another one will be 100 mm -hmm. grams. Because the ones that are big, we we'll always come to eat. The small ones do just yeah. the point of, uh, yeah. So it's 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 good to do the regular sorting in, in terms of your pond and stock fishes of the same sizes. Yeah. Now there's one thing some person too too. You know if you they will get some fishes that are wrong. Maybe let's say fish have stayed six months but it didn't grow well. When they now buy a new set of fish, they don't pick those ones that they are mix together with the new set of fishes you have. So it's not yeah. really advised to do those types of mixing. Yeah. yeah, so, and yeah. Over, when I was in Ibad and there was a farm, it was an eating pond, and before I know, there was a lot of fishes we are dying. Now when I asked, he said he noticed an issue with one of his fishes, and before I know, it affected also, it was Everything. a disease outbreak. 
So it's uh, mm-hmm. something if you notice it one, you start treating. You know, the person they allow it see when it has affected a lot of the fishes and it has been inside them. It's when they now start doing any treatment or any stuff. So I want also yeah. to, before you we'll go for today, we'll talk about now. You know, they have treatment when it comes to fish, they still have the preventive measures some persons apply. You know, most times you don't always wait till there's an outbreak before you want to prevent. So what are the preventive measures a farmer can apply within the time of culture, not just waiting till there's an outbreak before they act? All right. The kind of treatment they can use to treat their fish. Like, no, I'm talking about like preventive measures they can apply, not just waiting till there's an outbreak. Yeah, that is, that is, that is, um, where we talk, talked about, um, I do remember that is what we talked about. That was what we talked about biosecurity. Yeah. You need to pay attention. Listen to the video again. At the beginning, I mentioned about security. Yeah, I mentioned about about security and how those things might be done. So anybody who listens to that video again, I mentioned about hair, water, feet, technology, uh, and other things. You understand? Yeah. So that those are the things. Then your water management is very key. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us once again in live. It has been an enlightening and educative session with you today again. So we'll still be having more of the live stream. Like we said, uh, a lot of people have also been asking about a class we planned on having, but we'll make our time for that. Short, very soon and everyone will be communicated when that will be coming up soon so just stay tuned with us now for those joining on the live stream okay someone said you actually got the right one of the reasons okay yeah the last issue he was saying oh he said you actually got it right one of the reasons we had problem of cannibalism is that the mixture you just talked about I appreciate you guys so maybe they, they are missing different sizes of fish into um, one pond, oh. so that was the issue. Like, and yeah, so these are different management practices. Some persons just overlook in your farm, you know, you don't be like, ah, let me do this, let me do that. Like I said, we'll do more on the staffing issue because I have seen that most times the persons that they employ in the farm, because most of the owners of the farm might have little or no knowledge about the business, maybe they have the yeah. money to finance the business, but maybe they might not have the experience and they'll be like, ah. Uh, let me get someone that will manage the farm for me. And when the person comes, yeah. they might not even have the knowledge to manage that farm and make decisions that lead the person to losing a lot of money. So I employ most of the, a lot of the farm uh, farm owners. Yes, as you come online, you see some of these videos. Recommend it to anybody that is staying in your farm. Watch this, learn this, let the person at least upgrade in whatever they are doing because yeah, it's whole business of upgrade on a daily basis. So yes, thank you yes. very much yeah, for joining us. I know you had a very busy schedule, but for still joining us again. So thank it's you so much. It's a wonderful time, and we'll yeah. still be having more of the live session again. So thank you, no and problem. let's do uh, the healing streams that starts on the 18th. So yes, as your fishes are receiving healing for you, by you taking care of them, you also need to receive your own healing and strength. So the healing streams is coming up from the 18th yes. to the 26th of March. And there is also a link to register. So if you go online, you will see a link for you to register and you also can live stream the yes. program as it go. So thank you for joining us, everyone. And have a beautiful morning, afternoon or evening from wherever you are joining us. Thank you, Mr. Speedy Fickel, for joining thank us you. again. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you.